What even is Gen2? Well, it is a source-based Linux distribution where you can basically compile everything by yourself. Last Monday, I had the fantastic idea of installing it on my primary workstation. Enjoy me torturing myself, I guess. It is currently 9 p.m. on a Monday night and I really want to mess around with my workstation. I made about 125 gigabytes of unallocated space to mess around with. Yeah, as you noticed, this is me. Tired after a school day installing Gen 2. So, this will be an encrypted install as I am extremely paranoid. The partition table will be simple ext4 looks with a boot fat32 partition. I set up the looks partition from the terminal, as gparty doesn't support creating those yet. After mounting it, I installed the desktop tarball. This gave me a few extra goodies later on, as you will see. Now is a very good time to install Vim. I cannot stand Nano and its weird keybinds, I'm just sorry. Time for our first compilation with the default use flags. Aren't you excited? You should be. Here are use flags. They customize package compilation to your hardware and software stack. Truly the reason I love Gen2. I set those basic use flags for the setup, later on they will be customized further. Time to install a kernel now. I decided against configuring my own kernel and instead using a generically compiled distribution one. Yeah, yeah, stop, stop. Malrobot from the future here. Not really, but I have to say that my initial decryption config was incorrect and I wanted to show you my current one. The distribution kernel used Dracut for the initRamFS, so I just had to specify my exact drive UIDs in the proper configuration. I also configured the FS tab with cryptab mappings. A lot of bad guides suggest you should modify the grub configs, but the initramfs method is by far the cleanest. Now let's get back to the installation. You're watching some standard tools being installed. Nothing fancy, just stuff for system logs, file systems, etc. At this point, it was kind of late, so I was forced to be quick. I had already installed Xorg of camera when I began installing the XFCE desktop. Simultaneously, I was creating a user to log in with, installing sudo and giving myself the appropriate permissions was necessary to. Then I started a network manager pool. Remember, I'm using Wi-Fi and the default networking tools that Gen2 suggests just never worked for me. Now's the time. After everything was installed successfully, I did the reboot of truth. We are in the desktop. 
Of course, I did some changes in the meanwhile, since it has been almost a week of using Gen2, and my experience with it hasn't been that bad. XFC on first glance looks old and outdated. Even though I haven't customized it much at all, to be fairly blunt with you, I appreciate its old design. I'd pick it any day of the week over those supposedly modern designs. I specifically like the window borders and this basic dock. Such an underappreciated desktop. Gentoo's default package manager is Portage. It honestly is the only reason to use Gentoo. After all, this OS is basically just Linux from scratch with a source-based package manager. Apart from some packages being masked by default and requiring a lot of effort to unmask, I can't say I dislike Portage. Something that has stuck with me were the license warnings, which I would like to see included on other distros as well. Of course, compile times were not much of an issue with my beefy hardware. For instance, compiling and installing Pulse Audio with its dependencies took less than 10 minutes. Only package that was undeniably annoying was LLVM, which required 20 full minutes with 100% CPU usage. This would obviously become an issue with slower systems. The first real problem I experienced was my network card working fine, but some networks not being detected. I was unlucky enough for the invisible networks to include mine. After some googling, I found a Gentoo forum thread where this issue was solved with a simple use flag addition for WPA supplicant. Surely enough, after adding that, my network was detected and I have full internet support since. The title of this section could be true. I personally have a fairly advanced and deep understanding of the Linux user and kernel space and can thus make my own decisions for the display, audio, graphics stack or even the desktop environment window manager in its system. You get the idea. I felt rather comfortable messing around with the system, since it was based off my decisions and not some distro maintainers, like the case would be for let's say Fedora. This helped solve problems much more easily and gave me comfort knowing some dumb update wouldn't change my default from X to Wayland for example. I'm unsure if I will fully switch to this install, but it was pretty fun to play with regardless. After all, my issue with Linux isn't ease of use or hardware support. It's mostly the software I am used to, font rendering and some other stuff. And for those people, you know who you are. I use Gentoo by the way.